So here I've drawn a picture, and this is basically like if you were to think about the top of a cup or of a pool. There is water over here, this is air, this is the air water boundary. Now let's say I shoot a blue laser beam from the bottom of the pool, and it goes up, it reaches the boundary, and it's refracted. It comes off at a different angle than the angle that it came in at. Now this angle is of course made with respect to the normal. And this one over here is made with respect to the normal. This is the incident angle. This is the refracted angle. Now I did it again. This time it was a red beam. This one came in at some incident angle and it left at some refracted angle. Now I'm curious, is there such thing as an angle that comes in like this and it gets refracted? It gets refracted in such a way that it runs parallel to the air water boundary. It comes off like that. So yeah, it comes in through here and it gets refracted completely parallel to the surface. And we'll call the incident angle in this case theta sub c. Now my question to you is how can we calculate theta sub c for a water air boundary like this? Okay, so I hope you know it has to do with Snell's law. And if I was to write Snell's law for this case, it would be <laughs> the n of water, the index of refraction of water, times the sine of this theta sub c, the, the angle of incidence that produces a ray uh, that comes off parallel to the surface, is equal to the index of refraction of air, times the sine of the refracted angle. And what is the refracted angle in this case? Well, this comes off parallel to the surface, which means it has to be 90 degrees. And if you remember from your trigonometry classes, the sine of 90, that's just 1. Now this can get simplified now to the index of refraction of water times the sine of theta sub c must be equal to index of refraction of air. Now I can solve for sine of theta sub c. And what do I get? I get that that's equal to, I can plug in values now, 1.00. I have this from over here, 1.33 dividing by the index of refraction of water. All I did was just take this value and put it in. And I get that this, well, I know that 1.33 is just 4 over 3. So 1 over that must be 3 over 4 or 0 0.75. Now, if I take the arc sine of 0 0.75, I get that this angle, theta sub c, is approximately 48, 48.590, oh, zero is off in no man's land, zero, uh, 04 degrees. So yeah, this is the angle theta that if I was to shoot a laser at this angle with respect to the, to the normal, the refracted angle would come off and it would run completely parallel to the boundary. We have a name for an angle that does this. We call this the critical angle. Now, if you've actually, if you've taken calculus before, a critical point was a point where the slope, or not the slope, the, um, the concavity would change. It was, like a, it was like a changing point. So this applies here. We call this the critical angle because any angle greater than the critical angle would come off completely internally reflected. No more refraction would happen for angles that are greater than the critical angle. So this is the critical angle for water, and I actually have a demonstration of me doing, um, doing an experiment and calculating it by hand. This is a way that we would do it with literature values, but yeah, that's where the critical angle comes from and what it actually means.